Hello, everyone, and thanks for being here. Thanks, Aaron, and everyone on the panel, as well as the conference conveners, for making this all possible. Way back in 2008, I wrote a semi-satirical, self-accusatory commentary piece in the Chronicle of Higher Education entitled, Academic Travel Causes Global Warming. And while I am horrified to see that a pandemic has caused us to finally draw on the affordances of digital communication technologies to conference together, it is great to see that we are now starting to do so in earnest. In fact, the theme of my short video presentation today will be about taking advantage of new media and to quote the subtitle of our panel, quote, creative mobilities and ethnomusicology in a changing world, unquote. I'll try to touch on each of the main themes evoked in our panel abstract, including coming together, racial justice, listening to our collaborators and partners, and our mobility as conference goers, researchers, lecturers, students, and performers in diverse communities globally. However, I had to chop this down to eight minutes, so might give short shrift to a few of those key intersecting issues. I like the central question asked in that panel abstract, what should our fieldwork, classrooms, meeting structures, and performances spaces look like in the future? We each have different answers to that question and are each presenting small slivers of light into the collective yet highly pluralistic possible futures for our teaching, research, community engagement, musicking, and conferencing in this very important musical discipline. Writing or talking about cinematic and musical media is always difficult, and much I have learned about how to do that has been from colleagues on this panel and many others in the music studies disciplines. Yet I struggle to genuinely frame my musical and media production fieldwork engagements using a theory-first framing. I've done that a bit, as illustrated by these B-roll shots of journal articles and books, but increasingly I choose to let the complexities of film and fieldwork and film as fieldwork to be told using visual and aural rhetorics as much or more so than print-oriented textual analysis. While there are theoretical concepts in mind as I think about and present the following work, and I will very superficially list them in a second, my main strategy for answering the heady questions listed moments ago will make a virtue of necessity and follow the show, don't tell, advice given by writing instructors and auteurs alike. And so the following will be accomplished via a brief narrative to explain the genesis, development, and hopeful future of three intertwined projects, Song Gardens, the Global Field to Media Project, and what I began calling Together Alone back in 2016, an initiative mostly based on hope that, as you will see, seems to be gaining some steam now during COVID. If you like what you see there and want to take part, we'd love to see and hear your musical stewardship and placemaking so we can be together alone with you as well. The semiotic concept of articulation has been key. The ways in which signifiers such as sounds of a certain timbre, to name just one example, are combined with significations, in this case meanings associated with biodiversity and environmental justice that are attached to various sounds to then make them comprehensible and meaningful, combined to create new signs. And in this case, it happens to also be connected to literal signs, identifying, promoting more sustainable conceptions of what Jeff Todd Titan refers to as the sound commons. And so I will start the story in 2016 with a book chapter entitled Victoria's Towers and Trees, Together Alone Online. That was a deliberation on how this video by Adrian Shalafor, a singer-songwriter that I had interviewed and watched during field research, moved me to rethink the possibilities of social media as critiqued in Sherry Turkle's book, Alone Together. Largely thanks to a student, Taylor Leopold, shown singing here, and others that demonstrated interest during the COVID shut-in era, it has finally started taking shape. People are understandably longing to be together alone and can use the affordances of social media and digital media making tools to do what is called for in this project, to perform musical stewardship in a public place that we love. Musical placemaking. You can see each of the starting videos on ecosong.net, and the big call for participation comes in the form of a TEDx interstitial, of which what you will see in moments is an early rough cut. Related to that project is what we have been calling Song Gardens, a more intensive and collective form of Together Alone, wherein we recruited one musician or composer from each neighborhood around the University of Minnesota to record a song. These are the very first, and we hope for it to radio out, radiate out with help from our partners at Metro Blooms that we have worked with and learned from for the past 13 years now. This is where showing is far superior to telling, so here's a brief glimpse into how that is developing thus far. We are making the landscape and soundscape more sustainable, equitable, and biodiverse. Hey, that's a cool song. 
Peace, my name is Jayanti Rajasa, AKA Dafro Feather, and this is my buddy. My name is Two For One, Southside Minneapolis hip hop artist and water protector. Yes. Thanks for joining us in Northeast Minneapolis. Um, at the Song Garden, um, at Fair State Brewery, right in the back, planted by the community and our friends at Metro Bloom. Uh, we planted our Song Garden plaque that you can see here. And um, we want you to come on by someday and see this garden and use the QR code on the plaque here and to listen to our songs. Um, it's called The Same Changes. Together, we're making the landscape and soundscape more sustainable, equitable, and biodiverse. Hi, my name is Amelius White. I'm Director of Public Engagement in the College of Liberal Arts at the University of Minnesota. Thank you for joining me at the University of Minnesota Song Garden at Rapson Hall, planted by the community and our friends at Metro Blooms. We've just planted our song garden plaque, so please come by someday, see our garden, and use the QR code to hear our song, You Can Build a Garden. Together, we are making the landscape and soundscape more sustainable, equitable, and biodiverse. Finally, as far as thinking on a bit of a broader social scale, a quick mention of a project called Field to Media that I've had the privilege of working alongside, remotely speaking, Rebecca Dirksen, Elsa Roy, Jan Peng, and Tara Hatfield. To again cut to the chase, working with these amazing colleagues helped me to produce and direct a film premiere that premieres throughout October at five national, global, and regional festivals. We'll then release it to educational and other audiences more broadly, and are pleased that Oceans Alliance is now sponsoring the film. The film was made during the height of COVID restrictions, and again evidence that we need not let our old ways of communicating and musicing keep us from inventing new ones. There is not time to explicitly theorize or even outline these projects and how they relate to the questions raised in this panel, but I think you can see how I and the musicians, media makers, and organizers that I'm collaborating with are struggling to engage various publics in questions of environmental stewardship, equity, and biodiversity, foregrounding the role of musical stewardship. There might be a useful idea or two here as well in regard to the future of academic conferencing, going beyond the ubiquitous Zoom, as useful as that is. You, my friends in ethnomusicology, are probably able to look into the worlds I've just presented and more effectively identify our developing meanings, goals, and potential applications than I could, as I am also struggling with technical, logistical, and even pedagogical challenges as I try to make sense of work and research that continues unabated, yet greatly changed by ongoing viral realities, viral in both the digital and biological valence as that term, developments that could continue to affect and inhibit yet occasionally and somewhat ironically empower work that must be done. We're willing to stay six feet away from a person to prevent them from getting ill. How about staying 650 yards away from an orca so they can eat? So thank you for watching and listening as I share the ways in which I and my collaborators have been struggling to answer these important questions. And even more importantly, thank you for sharing your ideas and research.